All right, we're going to closely continue to follow the breaking news tonight of Donald Trump now facing three additional federal charges in the Mar-a-Lago documents case, uh, including uh, attempts to destroy video surveillance tapes. But right now, new video into out front of intense fighting in Ukraine that we wanted to make sure we shared with you. Forces are pushing south. In a video posted uh, here that we have, Ukrainians claim they are pushing back the Russians, forcing retreat, and they say they captured two of them. Now, we cannot confirm exactly where the video was filmed, but Ukrainians say it shows Russian soldiers surrendering. And of course, the, the heaviest fighting right now is near Zaporizhia. This comes of Yevgeny Prigozhin, the Wagner chief who engineered the attempted coup against Putin, has been spotted, not in Belarus, in St. Petersburg, in Russia, in the same city where Putin is right now. In fact, it is the first time that he has been seen in Russia since the insurrection. Nick Robertson is out front. In public, in Russia, Wagner affiliated accounts saying mercenary boss Yevgeny Prigozhin openly greeting a delegate to President Putin's Africa conference. The last time Prigozhin was seen in Russia was his mutiny to overthrow Putin's defense chiefs. He sent tanks and troops towards Moscow, a direct challenge to Putin's authority. Putin accused his longtime henchman of betrayal, vowing severe and inevitable punishment. Prigozhin backed down, reportedly cut a deal, was last seen in Russia a month ago, seemingly headed for exile in Belarus. Yet here he is in public, in Russia, apparently on the periphery of Putin's biggest international conference since he invaded Ukraine, hosting dozens of African nations. Until his failed mutiny and apparent banishment to Belarus, Prigozhin wasn't just vital in the war in Ukraine, he was Putin's biggest off-books overseas enforcer, cutting deals with Kremlin-friendly African leaders. This week, in a voice note sent to an African broadcaster, Afrik Media, Prigozhin reportedly said Wagner is still in business in Africa. His only caveat, Wagner mustn't damage Russia's interests. What other punishments have been forced on Prigozhin are far from clear. The British MOD say that it's short of cash selling Russian and international assets to pay his fighters. The CIA director, Bill Burns, says that Prigozhin shows no intent on retiring and far from a hard exile in Belarus, is able to move freely in and out of Russia. <laughs> Prigozhin's first post-mutiny appearance on camera seems to have come in Belarus last week. Now he seems to be back in Russia on Putin's doorstep. Hard to believe it could have happened without his old friend, the Russian president's say-so. And I think the real question now for Prigozhin is how long is this currency of involvement for Putin in Africa with these different leaders, with these different shady types of business deals that apparently have been going on? How long is that currency good to keep him out of the type of vengeance that we've seen Putin wreak on other opponents who have been so brazen as to try to challenge him? So far, Prigozhin seems to have had belly a flesh wound, if you will. Um, perhaps worse is yet to come. Aaron? All right, Nick, thank you very much. And I want to go now to retired U.S. Army Lieutenant General Mark Hurtling, the former commanding general for Europe and the 7th Army. So, General Hurtling, Putin calls Prigozhin a traitor to his country for the whole world to hear. And now here's Prigozhin back in Russia, in St. Petersburg, same place, same time, same event as Putin, in fact. What in the world's going on here? Yeah, it's, it seems a little bit bizarre, doesn't it, Aaron? You know, the African nexus uh, is a great power competition between the U.S., China, and Russia. What Russia does there, what Prigozhin does there, is he tries to erode Western influence while also extracting as much natural resources for Putin as he can. He's the lead in all this. So, you know, even though he almost committed a coup against Mr. Putin, and we can't look at their government and their military the same way we do at ours, He's yeah. still in control of Russia, or excuse me, in control of the troops in Africa and some troops in, in uh, the Middle East as well. So he's not going to go away. But there are indicators. 
that many African countries saw what happened in Russia with Prigozhin and are now doubting his capabilities even in Africa. That's why this Russia-Africa conference was so important. Right, and of course it's going on in Niger and all these things as Russia is trying to extend its, its influence and Niger, a crucial producer of uranium. Um, I'm curious though, this whole African summit, General, how you see it. Because obviously the U.S. government sees it as 17 heads of state from African countries came to St. Petersburg. Uh, that, that's half um, that, that attended the last summit. So it's a sign of Putin's isolation. Okay, it's still 17 countries, and a lot of those other countries still sent senior people, even though not the heads of state. But even when I look at those 17, three of them, three of the 17 that send heads of state to P Moscow right now uh, are in the top uh, t 10 uh, recipients of U.S. foreign assistance right now. Three of them. Yeah. It, e Egypt. It is a little bit. Yeah. It's bizarre, isn't it? That foreign assistance that we provide most of those countries, though, Aaron, is mostly through USAID. So it's developmental assistance. China, on the other hand, different from Russia, is the, con is the continent's bilateral trade partner. Russia provides protective alliances with corrupt and mostly authoritarian governments. So some of the countries you've seen, like Egypt, uh, you know, they, they run the, the boundary line between all three of those countries. Absolutely. Well, General, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it.